Tim. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Juggling Health and Wealth and Fix Your Sleep Combined broadcast this morning. And today I have the privilege of having Betty Williams, um, who is a sleep coach, uh, who will be interviewed by me about the struggles of sleep that people generally have and also how that affect our health so let's have a look um who's on our live here um, if you're here just give us a thumbs up or write on the screen um, this is actually a be live so we probably will be able to see you live if you are on um, but um yeah we officially only starting at 10 o'clock so while we are there Let's have a look at um, some of the things that, you know, we may be able to get to know Svetty a little bit. But before we start, um, yeah, let me just um, quickly introduce myself. Kitty Chang is my name and um, I host this Be Live uh, interviews uh, regularly and Svetty is actually my second guest. <laughs> the um, uh, opportunity to interview experts is something that I enjoy doing. And... Um, I, I am a health and wealth coach. Uh, I really am passionate about teaching people about the five dimensions of health, which include spiritual, emotional, mental, physical, and social health. And I also love to teach people about living wealth, which means that, you know, there are different pillars of wealth that, um, you know, we can actually focus on. But in terms of physical health, one thing that's very important is obviously sleep. And that's where Betty Williams comes in and she is an expert in this area. So maybe just start off, um, Betty, you can teach us and share with us a little bit about how you started this journey um, casually. Um, and then when, you know, 10 o'clock comes, I will inform, I will inform and introduce you formally. <laughs> So Sveti, take it away, share with us how you get started with this journey of um, being an expert in sleep. First of all, I, I'm just having, can you hear me? I can very clearly, yes, thank you. Okay, good. I was just wasn't sure if it was set up properly. Um, yes. yes, so my own journey with sleep started with, um, with my own sleep troubles, okay? So um, you see, I got very sick, about five years ago okay so i was very ill and um, i didn't know what to do with myself so i kind of started uh, my health journey so i began with fixing my diet i've done that I, and then i kind of uh, got rid of all my chemicals um in my in my pantry in my uh, um you know bathroom cabinet and um stuff like that so i began to feel much better okay Good. So mm -hmm. I became healthier for, for a, a very long time, not very long time, for a few years, I was very healthy and fit. However, yes. when I became very busy uh, studying a lot, researching, writing my book, I became um, sick again, so you see, I became mm -hmm. very ill. And I wasn't sure what, why, because you see, my diet was right. I was exercising. I was uh, doing everything right. However, my my um, my health was not um, was not very good. So yeah. then I realized I wasn't sleeping very well. You see, so yeah. because. Uh, my brain, my mind was racing, and I was um, I was so busy I couldn't relax at night to mm -hmm. to allow myself to go to sleep. Yes. So um, it was very um, very stressful for me to you know lie in bed tossing and turning. So. Mm -hmm. Then I realized I already know these um, techniques to, that I was using on, the, on other people from complementary medicine. And right. I actually realized that I grew up uh, using all these you know, medicinal herbs and uh, traditional methods um, yeah. to, Im to implement your health and you know, to, to help with the health and to kind of fix um, those little elements in your life and stuff like that. Uh, we also... I also grew up with uh, awareness of uh, prevention rather than trying to cure diseases. We worked on a lot of preventing uh, the diseases. Okay. Yeah. So I kind of realized that and I reconnected with that and I started using this um, methods on myself and I started researching these methods. And then right. what I've done, 
Yes, and then what I've done, it worked really well on me. It fixed my sleep literally yep. in days. Like, wow, first mm-hmm. night I slept really well, and I kind of start, kept using it, and I fixed my sleep completely. Wow, so I a- kind of we taught my body and my mind how to relax and how to stay asleep all night and how to go to sleep when I need to sleep. So I didn't need to uh, to have any afternoon naps or I didn't have those burnouts and I wasn't stressed anymore. I wasn't um, kind of craving those junk foods and sweet foods and salty foods, whatever you, you're craving the next day when you didn't have enough sleep. So I oh, stopped yes. craving that. Yes. Wow. So... You see, uh, then what I've done, I started, uh, I, I made up this manual for to give out to people so people can also try on themselves because yep. I was very curious to know if this works on me, how about uh, on other people? I wanted to try this on the general population to sure. see if this is actually effective because I thought, what if it's just me, you know? But I've started using it on other people and I got really good feedback. Yeah. People started telling me that this uh, works really well on them. And I started yeah. become like researching even more and more. And I started writing my book. And um, this became kind of my, my purpose, you know, you see. Um, it became my central focus of my research, of my career, and of my um, – I, I directed all of my um, knowledge and yeah. my time to, to become what I am today. Uh, well, I – I'm still in evolving and research. I don't think it could ever stop. So um, yes. I fixed a lot of people came to me and said, my sleep is better. I want more. Why don't you write a book? And I, that's how I started writing the book. And because yes. you see, originally I wanted to write a book on something else, but because this became my priority. So I changed my plans. I changed everything to became um, to focus on sleep. Wonderful. Thank you, Sadie, for that um, sharing. That's really wonderful for you to be able to, first of all, experience that um, sleeping issue yourself and then being able to fix it for yourself. So now you're able to help others as well. So now it's officially 10 o'clock. And so welcome to all of you. I can see that there's a few people that are live with us. And um, we'll just officially start. And today is uh, my privilege to again, um, you know, interview Sadie Williams. And let me just just um, read her official bio, which is basically uh, what um, she's all about in terms of her expertise in sleep. So born in a small village in poorest country of Europe, Svedi spent most of her childhood being around her grandmother and great-grandmother. Gathering in the produce of nature, medicinal herbs and steak, nuts, berries, fruit and vegetables. She observed her great-grandmother preparing herbal tinctures, remedies, and teas to cure ailments. These experiences instilled in her the understanding that the most effective treatments available to us come from natural, traditional sources. Sveti became a healthcare practitioner and developed a sleep, deep interest in sleep. Being troubled by years of poor sleep herself and suffering in her health as a result, Fixing her own sleep became the central focus of Sveti's career, as she just shared with us. And now she is looking at the bigger picture of society's sleep problem and helping other people in the importance of sleep and also how the risk involved in poor sleeping patterns and supporting people with sleep problems, which is going to be the main topics of our discussion today. Uh, the struggles of sleep. And um, Sveti's ex- expertise is to help people to enjoy a good night's sleep, which is amazing. It's a wonderful mission, I say, Sveti. And um, because, you know, as we all know, it's fundamental to health, well being, and longevity. And Sveti continues to draw inspiration from her childhood introduction to natural rem- medicine spaces, as well as um, the sleep enhancing method that she's learning through holistic practices so again thank you for being here with us today and share with us your expertise on sleep and how to go about the uh, fixing the issues and struggles of sleep steady so to start off with yeah thanks for having me kid it's a pleasure
Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so let me ask you a few questions that I have personally gathered, but also at the same time knowing that uh, you know there are quite a number of common struggles uh, that people experience in terms of sleep. First of all, um, how can we overcome the struggle of not being able to fall asleep quickly or you know having the difficulties falling asleep when they go to bed? Yes. Okay. Well, that's a good question, Kitty. And, you know, um, this is a very, very common question. I get asked this question a lot. So what I usually tell people that um, uh, to fall, usually it take, could take us about 15 to 20 minutes to fall asleep, which is, a, which is normal. So if it takes you any longer than 20 minutes, then uh, yes, there could be um, uh, a few elements that uh, you need to kind of change for you to go to sleep easier, okay? So if, yeah. you, for, if somebody falls asleep as soon as they hit that pillow, that mm -hmm. means uh, they are sleep deprived, they're very tired and they need more sleep. Uh, oh. So if if it takes over twenty minutes, usually uh, those factors um, could be such as like sleep disrupting factors, such as your over over uh, working mind. You can't yeah. you cannot switch off your mind. Usually, this is the most common uh, fact that people um, have, and they can't fall asleep because of it. Yes, I see. So to so, be able to fall asleep within 20 minutes is common and normal. Yes, uh, usually it's called sleep latency. So uh, yeah. our body, we are designed that way that we need mm -hmm. that particular relaxation and kind of we need to go for different brain waves uh, for us to be able to kind of drift into that uh, sleep very gradually and um, go into this uh, light sleep first and then go into the deeper sleep, um, you see, because um, this is how uh, we, we can't, Shifting from one brainwave to the other um, is the, um, um, it, it, people do that a lot. It happens a lot when we are tired, but it's best to just go slowly into from one brainwave to another. So basically from the moment of switching the lights off, lying in bed to and then slowly move into the relaxation mode. And then we okay. then we move into the light sleep and then into deep sleep. Wonderful. So in Thank that uh, in that time uh, of fifteen or twenty minutes, this is what we need to do. We need to uh, implement those relaxation um, uh, techniques. For example, uh, meditation and relaxation. You know, like trying to switching off your mind uh, to in order to go to sleep. And uh, when you do that, you will stay asleep for the entire yes. night. A lot of times, you know, people just go to sleep very fast and then they wake up for the night because, again, they didn't have that time to actually relax before bed. So they didn't prepare their mind uh, for the night um, for the night of sleep. So they kind of uh, quickly fall asleep and then they wake up for the night. Okay, wonderful. And I see that Farmer Greg is here with us. Hello, Greg. <laughs> wonderful to have you with us. Okay, so second question that I have for you, I know that you touched it a little bit as you answered the previous question, but this is also a very, very common problem, I realize, and that is people have a lot of raising mind issues. They think of a lot of things when they are trying to fall asleep. How did that come about and how are we able to fix that problem of raising mind? Yes, it's very common. This is anti of population have this. We all have that at some stage or another or all the time. Uh, so again, um, not to get to that stage of having your mind um, racing so much, you see, you need to go to bed at the appropriate time. So basically, yep. uh, you need to regulate your circadian rhythm, your body clock. So you go to sleep at a specific time when your body is ready. Once we go past that point when our body is telling us to go to sleep, this is when we fall asleep quickly yeah. and then we, we don't uh, get that initial light sleep stage, you see, where our brain needs to relax. Uh, also, this could have an opposite effect. People, once they get past specific points and when they need to go to sleep, they can no longer fall asleep. And this is when um, they become um, 
anxious, uh, trying to fall asleep, and that gives them more anxiety and turns into like a sleep disorder rather than uh, sleep insomnia you see it becomes a like yes. logical uh, problem instead of having some so, sort of a physical um, obstacles to fall asleep you see so yes. Um, yes back to your original question of how do you actually uh, relax your mind to go to sleep I usually teach my my clients my patients my people to um, to implement to line bed and to implement those few methods uh, to allow them to um, to relax their minds but again there is a few to take in or, uh, before they actually in bed in terms of um, regulating their sleep hygiene what this means it means uh, regulating their his um, kind of nighttime um, uh, nighttime kind of uh, rituals uh, to yeah. to allow them to relax the mind so for example those things could be um eliminating caffeine after 3 p.m or even midday you know caffeine can stand our body for up to 10 hours you see so sure. and then implementing sure. those little sleep enhancers uh yeah. that could help them go to sleep like um relaxation tea or listening to relaxation music um you know turning your screens uh, uh, right down like you know uh, not to have it so bright in your face a lot of people have different different um, um, kind of sleep um, disruptors that uh, some people have less some people more for example uh, have looking at the computer screen doesn't disrupt my sleep but it could disrupt other people's sleep you see so just doing those little steps to improve them um, uh, their sleep is actually very important because sure. you see if people struggle from sleep and they do these things that actually um, makes their mind even more active at night and then they go to bed and you, they can't switch their mind it's actually they need to implement those little steps to allow their mind to relax but what yeah. I do in my book and with my clients I teach them this uh, method of um, it's we use these points on our head and um, that's called neurovascular points and they relax the mind and allow the to activate the frontal lobe of the brain uh, so um we can actually uh take it uh, um relax uh, ox uh, occipital brain so, so the back brain so we're uh -huh. not in the fight or flight mode anymore right. you see so we're yeah. more into like a logical yeah. brain and when the logical brain um switches on it, it tells us that it's okay we don't have to stress about it we don't have to um race you know to get things done we can just relax and go to sleep you see so yeah. um you, usually what i suggest uh, my client um i usually uh, we work firstly we work on um identifying the sleep disruptors you see we right. go through their medical history and we identify what exactly disrupts their sleep mm. and so we identify as many as we can and then yeah. uh, in the next uh, next session we actually implement sleep enhancers so we find those things that could implement their uh, yeah can improve their sleep and help them relax at night to to help them fall asleep according to their sleep disruptors you see yes and what i find um i tend to teach them these methods of relaxation I also yes. teach them how to. Yes, yes, because you, I, it's very and of course I switch my mind as soon as I go to bed. I know that I, I do these little rituals to help myself fall asleep, like deep breathing, a uh, diaphragmatic uh, breathing, like I, I adjust my diaphragm muscle and I do little things and I kind of allow myself to go to sleep and drift into that brain wave to go to the uh, light sleep first and then into the deep sleep. But you see, once you yeah. do these techniques a few times, your body just knows. You do one of the methods and your body just knows. It's like a signal, go to sleep, you know?
Yeah, I like that. Yes. I actually yes. had had a lot of issues、um, for a long time in terms of raising mind, and because I'm a very active person, I like to think a lot, and it just occurs to me that、um, I really need to have a sleeping ritual. And like Greggy said,、yes. prepare your mind before going to sleep. And what I have been doing is、um, going through like. You know,、uh, reading my book before I go to sleep is my first ritual, and I would、okay. basically switch off my my lap、uh, my um phone, like because I know that if I keep、yeah. on reading, you know, my messages, then it's not good. And they talk about on mobile, you've got this blue light, which is not good for our、yeah. eyes and for our sleep as well. Yeah, and um and then I would be having deep breathing and a prayer, and then I would be going. Through like a, met, a mindfulness sort of body scan and all that really helps me now. So like what you've taught, I will implement as well. I think it will further help me in stopping those racing thoughts. Yeah. Okay. So the third、yes. question I have for you is:、um, this、uh, is a challenge that、yeah. I personally experience, and that is,、um, I find it challenging to go to bed around the same time. I understand through speaking with you and also reading a lot about、uh, healthy sleeping pattern is is actually really important because of the、um, circadian rhythm to go to bed at the same time. And how do you encourage or suggest people have that habit? Yes,、um, it is very important to go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time again because、uh, w- this is our body clock. Okay, this is our circadian rhythm that is set in- inside our brain. So once、uh, we need to listen to our body, when our body tells us go to sleep, you see our melatonin production begins at about nine p.m. So、oh, once that begins. We actually have about an hour or so to actually go to sleep. Okay, so it allows us an hour to relax and settle into the into the sleep. So if you don't go to sleep at the same time, your body gets confused.、Um, okay. So it gets confused. And doesn't understand why it is still doesn't understand what is happening and what what happens with that the body goes into fight or flight basically because it doesn't understand why it's still up it's getting ready to flee so、okay. it's getting ready to run fight so basically you're putting yourself into fight or flight mode without even knowing that you know you don't you probably don't even feel it you know so、oh, wow. the body thinks. Right, I'm up. Something's happening. Let's go. You know,、mm. let's let's be active, and that's how people get overactive. And once they pass their bedtime clock,、um, bedtime hour, they actually, or if they do fall asleep very quickly, they go straight into the deep sleep. They wake up through the night because the mind is still confused. It went from being.、Um, Uh, kind of ready to flee to be deep asleep, and then it wakes up for the night, thinking, "What's happening?" And then you, people can't fall back asleep. Oh, that's, that's why having that bedtime routine,、uh, those ritual before bed, you actually train in your mind. You tell in your mind, right now, I've got this melatonin production. The body is actually doing it for you. You see,、um, you just. When we kind of stand up, we're going against our body.、So、the body is so intelligent in know the the moment the light goes down and the moon comes. You see,、um, uh, the body is getting ready for sleep, and it's we're getting that melatonin production. We're getting that、uh, those hormones、um, ready for us to go to sleep. But because we we're going past our bedtime, we're fighting it. We're going against it, and again, that's where the body gets confused and it doesn't know what to do. I see. So I need to be sure that I go to sleep at the same time every night, rather than、yes. different times. Yes. Okay. That's a really good、that's、explanation. Why, and that's why it kind of disrupts our entire circadian rhythm. Oh yes. Yeah. But the body okay, is still and- going. To- Use the melatonin at nine o'clock. However,、uh-huh. the the body clock will shift. Okay, the body body clock shifts, and then that interrupts. And in in yeah, it's it's gonna be encouraging、yes. us to go to sleep as a result of the、um, importance of body clock. So that's good. Yeah, and、um, yeah. what about people generally? You know, being a night owl because there's so many of us that perhaps. 
you know, uh, used to sleeping late, and I understand that also affects our sleeping pattern. Um, why is that? Why is being a night owl is not a good idea? Okay, so first of all, um, we everyone is different. As much as we are the same biologically, we are different. Our body clock is set up at the different times and some people do have that the body clock um kind of shifted a little bit um uh, later than other people so when you are a night owl and you know that yeah it suits your body um better to go to sleep at later rather than earlier and wake up later which is fine Okay. However, I wouldn't recommend to go to sleep past midnight. So every hour that we go to sleep late, we're actually losing two hours of our sleep. So this is how body responds to us. For If we're missing out on the hour before midnight, sorry, every hour past midnight we miss on sleep, the body is actually losing two hours of sleep. Do you know what I mean? Like the body is yep. missing out on the benefits of two hours of sleep. So, so uh, let's for say, those who are not, yeah. For example, um, instead of going to bed at midnight, if I go to bed at one o'clock, then I'm actually missing two hours. If I go to bed at 2 a.m., I'm missing four hours. Is that correct? Exactly, yes. Wow. So the okay. The body is um, past midnight. Our body uh, needs to go through those processes of decluttering the brain, uh, clear, cleaning the brain, literally cleaning the brain from the chemicals via our um, uh, um, spinal fluids, you see. Um, Mm. So if we don't allow our body, brain and the mind would not get clean. Um, yep. So our short-term memory is actually going to suffer. So the uh, whatever happened for the day, all the events and everything that you were exposed to during the day and anything that you were trying to learn and or you read not move from the short-term memory to the long-term memory. So basically that information will just get lost and you will not remember it, you see. That's yeah. why when we study or when we uh, read, we want to go to bed earlier rather than later because we need to retain that information and that into put it into the long-term memory, have it in the short-term memory and forget about it, you see? Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, we there's a lot of processes happen only when we are sleeping. They are, cannot happen when we are awake. So for those who are night owls, I still recommend to them to go to bed about 11 o'clock. <laughs> for a lot of night owls, they don't consider 11 night owl. It's still early for them, but I think it's a good thing for them to change that habit. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that um, every hour after midnight, we're actually losing two hours. So what that means is even if they wake up late, they have already lost that two hour, those two hours. So. Yes. It's important for us to sleep relatively early before uh, 11 o'clock or midnight latest. You need to go, okay. you need to wake up today and go to sleep today, not tomorrow. You see, not past oh. midnight. Oh, wow, that's a really yeah, good tip. Have, yes, sleep today, sleep before the turn of the day because midnight yeah. after midnight is already the next day. Wonderful, yes, I'll remember. <laughs> Because okay. you see, when we lose those hours of sleep, we can't catch up to them. We cannot yes. catch up uh, on those hours that we lost. No oh, matter wow. how much you sleep, you go to bed at 2 o'clock and thinking, oh, if I get 8 hours, I can wake up at 11 or so. I will make up. The body doesn't work like that because those biological processes only work at specific time. And regardless what time we go to sleep, they will work um uh, on their own because the body is so intelligent it's almost like we cannot control those uh, processes in the body of uh, you know digestion assimilation of the food um, the times when our respiratory system is mostly active you know that like we just cannot uh, trick those processes and shift them you see we can shift mm -hmm. our sleep but we can't uh, make our body uh, change those processes according to when we want to go to sleep so it's best to work with your body instead of against it.
Yeah, I see um, Farmer Greg, he said, my body is always confused then. So what that means is maybe he's sleeping at different times of the day or the night. I know what you mean, past, uh, Farmer Greg, because I feel the same. Sometimes I you know, sleep earlier, say 10.30. Mm -hmm. Other times I sleep at midnight, other times even later. So after listening to you, Spetty, I'm going to be sleeping at the same time and definitely wake up today and go to sleep today. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Okay, so another question I have for you there, Sveti, is why, how do you help people uh, who say that um, I find it very difficult to get out of bed in the morning? I think it's a common question that you would find people asking you, right? Yes. So a few factors there. For example, it's very difficult to get out of bed in the morning if you go to bed late. You see, sure. again, because we lost those initial hours of sleep that the body needs after the melatonin production began at 9 p.m. You right. see, the body is confused. It's confused why it's still asleep past 7 a.m. You see, why is it? Why did it go to? Why did the body go to sleep so late? Why? Why is it not sleeping at the time when it needs to go to sleep, say 10 o'clock, you see? So yeah. the body is confused and the body isn't ready. Your uh, processes in the body have not um, gone through those stages uh, properly and efficiently, you see? So again, oh. your um, adrenals aren't ready to begin the day because they haven't had that initial um, stages of you know recovery and recuperation. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. Have you found, have you noticed that the earlier that you go to bed, the easier it is to wake up in the morning? That's true, obviously, because we would have um, enough rejuvenation and rest already. Yes, so the body isn't isn't ready. So you see, our melatonin production uh, stops um, at uh, when the, when the light comes up. See, when the, when the light uh, uh, kind of um, comes in contact with our skin does when the skin our body stops the melatonin production so it's ready we are ready to wake up but because the mind is still so so tired it, it can't wake up so we get kind of into the confusion again so why am i not up still why am i so tired why am i not cleaned properly you see so right. you suffer more for the day when you don't go to sleep easier Oh, wow. Fantastic. It's really important to understand so, that if we sleep early, then we'll be able to get up early. And I find that um, it actually in um, one of the chapters of my book, I talk about getting out of bed. And that's part of physical health uh, in terms of um, sleeping early and then go to uh, and then wake up early. So then you'll be able to get out of bed and take on the day. Yes. So that sleep has a lot yes. to do with that. You see, Kitty, before you think about next morning, think about tonight. You see, okay. before you plan your day, say, oh, I need to get up in the morning. And how? And if you help yourself how to get out of bed earlier and easier and have a better day and without having a feeling um, lethargic all day, you see, tired. plan the night before. Yes. Begin with sleep. Sleep is uh, the missing step in getting to your optimal health and emotion, the level of emotional health, you see. And even for those people who are trying to lose weight, build muscle, um, uh, you know, whatever they're trying to do in life, and they, if they want to achieve good results in that, they need to make sure they begin with sleep and they begin a night before to prepare the night before not in terms of just making your list for the day but uh planning to go to sleep at a specific time to give yourself enough time so 10 o'clock go to sleep and you know you're gonna wake up at say seven six o'clock in the morning and you had about seven and a half or eight hours of sleep Wonderful, wonderful. All right, we are actually um, touching about 10.30 now, so we've had a really good half an hour chat, Sveti. And thank you so very much for your sharing. And it's just been wonderful to learn a bit more about how we can cope with our sleep struggles as well as um, how they're related to our health. And this is something that I'm very passionate about, and that's why I feel such a privilege to be able to connect with you and learn more about sleep. So thanks once again. And before before we uh, stop our broadcast, is there any final uh, advice you want to share with us? 
Uh, yes, well, thanks for having me today, Kitty. It's been a pleasure chatting to you and um, spreading my, you know, my wisdom and what I've learned about sleep. So, yes, what I would like to uh, recommend to people, whoever uh, will be watching this, I would recommend them um, plan your sleep. So plan, plan those eight hours from the moment you lay down in bed plan to be in bed to be asleep for about seven and a half hours minimum okay mm -hmm. uh, some people can get away with less but just again that depends on the diet depends on the circadian rhythm depends on the body clock however until you know exactly how much your body needs to sleep plan to sleep for about seven and a half to eight yeah. hours okay mm -hmm. and eventually when you regulate your body clock you can how much sleep you really need but begin with this, okay? Yes. All right. Well, I definitely will plan my sleep. <laughs> that is something that I really do need to do. I understand the importance of it now. And thank you for helping me improve my sleep pattern. So on that note, once again, thank you, my dear Thanks. friends, Betty. And um, Betty is going to be coming to visit me in Melbourne in July. So in a month's time, we'll be re having a reunion. By the way, for those of uh, my friends that are on Facebook who don't know, Betty is actually from Brisbane and I'm from Melbourne. So we're able to connect um, through live yeah. here, but we'll be um, seeing each other in July. So we'll um, certainly do a lot more live when we see each other. So until then, everyone, take care and and. Love you, Sveti. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.